right, video number two of the how you doing bowler handbag. We are going to start here with step number 15. Um, we finished steps one through 14 in the first video. So now we are going to assemble our um, zipper panels and the gusset. So if you're using a pre-made zipper, um, you want it to be a 20 inch zipper. That's the length of the teeth. And then there's usually about half an inch of zipper tape after the teeth. If you're using um, zipper tape that you've cut, you want it to be 21 inches total in length. Um, so a lot of people I think are nervous about maybe putting the zipper pull back on the zipper, but if you just separate the end a little bit like this and um, slide one end into the the open side, no, is that what you call that? I don't know, this side with the split thing in the middle. And I just look in there to make sure it's lined up right and slide it on and it's just that easy. And I find it easier to keep the pole in the middle so that both ends are closed um, as I sew. So you want to place the zipper on top. This is step number uh, 15. You want the zipper panel right side up and the zipper on top right side down along the long straight edge and pin it in place. Um, my zipper is one and a quarter inch wide zipper tape this way, which is like a number five or handbag zipper. Um, so I will use a three eighths inch seam allowance. If your zipper is one inch wide, um, then go ahead and just use a quarter inch seam allowance. You know, some of the YKK zippers that I buy, um, from Zip It Zippers on Etsy, they are only one inch wide. This is, um, handbag zipper tape, I guess. It's number five. It's one and a quarter inch wide, and I get it from Blue Calla Patterns. Okay. So pin that all the way down the long straight edge of one of your exterior zipper panels. This has on the back the foam attached with the Shape Flex interfacing over top, um, which holds the foam in place along that long straight edge. And then we are just going to sew this in place. I'll use a shorter stitch length using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure when you get to the zipper pull, you might need to move it out of the way. Um, so just make sure that if you do, that you stop with your needle in the down position. And then just move the zipper pull out of the way. Um, and also, if you're using like a domestic sewing machine, or depending on what foot you normally sew with, you might want to switch over to your zipper foot for this. Um, I use this super narrow foot for everything, pretty much. So. I don't change mine out, I'll just use that foot. Okay, trim those threads. And now I'm going to go over to my iron and I'm going to um, press the zipper away from the exterior zipper panel. 
Okay, so I pressed the zipper away from the zipper panel. Um, in the pattern, I do not have this part being top stitched. And I didn't on my last one, and it worked fine. Um, I'm going to try something on this one where I top stitch this. I think I think I'm going to top stitch this at a 1 8 inch seam allowance, and then when I attach my lining, I'll do it at a quarter inch seam allowance, so then there will just be two lines of uh, top stitching along the zipper on the finished bag. So, do I want to do that? I think so. So you can skip this top stitching. Um, as I have in the pattern or when you get to the end of your bag if you want to do top stitching here you can and then you can just stitch over that same top stitching um, whatever works best for you I don't know I kind of want two lines of top stitching on my finished bag I think it'll look nice I'm just worried about how evenly spaced I can keep it um, and that's why I didn't put it in the pattern I also wasn't sure about the zipper color, black or gray. The gray I had was lighter and didn't match, so I went with black. Um, hopefully it's fine. Hopefully I don't dislike it when I get done. Again, we're going to attach this uh, using a 3 8 three eighths inch seam allowance because my zipper is one and a quarter inch wide. See how far I can go on this video before I stop for lunch because it is 11.30 right now and I did not eat breakfast and I had three cups of coffee. Okay, let me go press this again away from the zipper and I will be right back. Okay, press the other side of the zipper panel away from the zipper and I'm going to again top stitch that and um, at a 1 8 inch seam allowance and then I'll use a quarter inch when I attach my lining at the end. Um, so you can skip this entirely if you are worried about your two lines of stitching being even. I did not put it in the pattern. Um, if you're following the written directions, I do not top stitch this.
Okay, now you will take um, the, what do I call these? Exterior contrast side gusset panels. You will place it right side down on the end. Um, it will match up the short end, the short um, straight edge of the side gusset panel will match the end of the sewn zipper panels. So just pin that in place, right sides together. Um, go ahead and pin the other side as well. Alright, and then you will sew this together using a half inch seam allowance. And you can sew right over the zipper. Um, this one's nylon coil. If you're using a metal zipper, then you will want to hand crank your machine over those points so that you don't hit the zipper and break it. I just will uh, hand crank and kind of like wiggle the needle down in between the teeth. Your exterior contrast is a fabric. Um, at this point you can press this down. Mine's vinyl so I cannot press that. So I'm going to switch out my top thread um, to be the one that matches my vinyl. I'll leave the bobbin thread in um, since that won't show on the right side anyway. Alright, so the um, seam allowance is down underneath the um, gusset panel, the side gusset panel. And I'm going to top stitch this using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. on the other side. And I'm just making sure since I couldn't press this that I'm pulling that um, side gusset panel away from the zipper panels. And this actually would also probably look nice with like two lines of um, top stitching through it if you wanted. Alright, so now, let's see, that was step number 17. Okay, now we want to move on to step 18. We want to mark the top and bottom centers of everything. So, on the wrong side of this completed gusset, I am going to find, and I'm just using the little ruler here along my sewing machine, and I'm going to mark the center of the short ends of the zipper gusset, or whatever I call it now, exterior gusset. Okay, you can also just fold this in half 
which is probably easier and find the centers that way. Um, I will fold this in half to find the centers. And again here okay and then I'm going to lay that flat and I'm just going to mark all the way along here because that will help me later um, when I attach the lining okay so centers are marked on that piece let me grab my exterior main panels and the exterior main panel pattern piece and on the wrong sides I am going to mark the top center and the bottom center and you can also just fold it in half to do that um, I flip it over to make sure that I had it lined up right and re repeat that process on the other panel. Okay, you'll be happy that you did that later. So we are now going to attach the um, gusset, the exterior zipper gusset to the exterior main panel. So how we'll do this first is match up right sides together, those center marks. And there's no front or back to this bag, so it doesn't matter which way the um, zipper is going at this point. We're going to sew with the main panel up, so I always place my pistol place my clips that direction and I do that because the back sides flat so it glides better along the sewing machine so I'm just going to um, clip at the top just a few clips and then I'm going to go down to the side and I'm going to make sure that um, my side gusset piece top lines up with the top of um, the contrast, or I'm sorry, the overlay that's in the bottom corner of the main panel. Oops. Okay, and with this vinyl, if you use vinyl piping, make sure you have a sewing machine that's going to be able to sew through that. These seams will be a little thick down here. So keep that in mind. And that clip just broke. Okay. So I'm going to check from the other side. Let me put a couple clips above this. Okay, I'm going to check here to make sure that that lines up, and it does. Um, so double check that before you sew that the these red clips are the actual Wonder Clip brand, Clover Wonder Clips. I think that's, they're all breaking. I don't know if it's just because they're old, but these ones that I bought cheaply off Amazon seem to hold up better. And I don't feel so bad about throwing them throwing them away if they break when it was like eight or nine dollars for a hundred compared to sixteen dollars I think I paid for thirty or fifty wonder clips. Alright so again I'm just matching up that overlay to the side gusset piece and then clip the bottom corners. Okay, 
okay, and then just ease around the corners. So as you see, when you line this up, the top edge can look a little wavy on the main panel, and that's because the top edge is bigger around than the gusset, but this line where you have the stitching from attaching the piping, that should be the same length as the gusset. Um, so when you pin in place, that's the line that you want to make sure that you don't have any wrinkles or puckers in. Okay, let me... Alright, so once that's all clipped in place, I'm going to check from the other side um, to make sure that my overlay and my side piece line up. And then I'm going to flip this over. I want to... I'm going to use my zipper foot on my sewing machine so that I can sew right along the stitch line. going to switch my thread back out. Stay my gray thread. I'm going to use a shorter stitch length of about three, and um, I see the stitch line from where I've attached the piping previously, and now you'll sew just inside of that line. So um, it should still be about half an inch seam allowance, but it'll be just inside of it, and that'll just make sure that your piping is nice and tight. there. Good. I'll go back over that part when I get done. I'm not sure if it's just from the thickness with the piping and the overlay and the side panel all in the same. The corners are usually where I have the most trouble with my piping. Um, getting it to look tight. And I feel like I have more problem. I'm hoping that this piping works out okay. I feel like um, vinyl piping is just a little bit fatter since the vinyl is thick, so it's a little bit easier to get it right. But like 95% of the time, my piping is not good on the first try, and I have to go back through and stitch closer um, in certain spots. And I think the last time I got it perfect and I was so excited, then the second side of the bag, I just did horrible, so... Actually looks really good. So just pop it out. Make sure that there aren't any parts um, where your vinyl is suck or I mean sorry where your piping is like pulled into the seam allowance, and that there aren't any parts where it's hanging way out. Um, if you need to stitch a little closer in certain spots, then just make sure you like. Usually it's the corners for me. Then I'll just pull it back through and go stitch back over that corner. I'm going to restitch this part on the bottom um, where it skips stitches. 
Oh, it might be from sewing through the tape that's on my overlay. I don't know. Either way, I'm just gonna go back over that spot. Okay. And make sure you don't, make sure your piping is good before you trim any seam allowances because once you trim that seam allowance, um, it's going to be really difficult to fix your piping. So, you can trim that now. I'm going to sew the other side on first and then I'll trim um, both at one time. I'll unzip my zipper now. Where's my other main panel? Okay, so now I'll take the other exterior main panel and repeat this process. Let's see, line up the top center. And then line up the overlay, the top of the overlay with the top of the side gusset panel. down this side and then I'll check to make sure that that looks okay from the other side. And for those of you who haven't done a drop-in lining before, um, I know some people don't like them so maybe it scared you off but it really is not difficult. We're just going to assemble the whole exterior and then assemble the whole interior and then you drop in the interior. Um, and then attach it along the zipper. So make sure that your overlay matches your side panel, which it does. And then in the other side, clip it in place. And then again, we're going to stitch up. Let me make sure that that side of the thing matches up. Sorry, trying not to get my head in the video. All right, I'm gonna scooch it up. Just scooch the main panel up just a little bit. All right, and then let me check again. Now we're going to stitch again right along that same stitching line just inside of it and that will make sure that our vinyl's or our piping is nice and tight. Okay, my machine is skipping stitches again in that same spot. So weird. I put a new needle in before starting the bag so I don't that. Maybe it's just the thickness. Or the thickness and the tape together. And do you see how I guide the bag up around the end of my sewing machine? Um, when you try to sew everything flat, it doesn't work out as nicely. So this always makes my curves look nice. same time don't be afraid to squish your squish the bag up if you need to you can always press it when you're done
Okay. So let's go ahead and check that um, that side from the other side. Make sure the piping looks good. Make sure that we didn't miss any spots or um, that we need to get closer. So you need to get a little bit closer here. Can you see that the stitching is showing on the piping? Um, so I'll go ahead and right in that spot. I'll just start here, back stitch, and then I will get a little bit closer to the piping, just along that area. So it's okay. Um, if you need to go back four or five times, the last time, the last bag I made with piping, I literally went at it like 50 times. And then I trimmed my seam allowance, and then I realized that I needed to fix it more, and that's not fun, so don't do that. All right, so now we'll go ahead and trim all the seam allowances down. Um, and I trim them probably like an eighth, an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch. It's going to help your seams, um, like the outside of your bag shape, look nicer from trimming the seam allowances down. And just use some nice sharp scissors for this because it is pretty thick. And just make sure that you're not cutting through anything else on the back side. side off and then we're going to attach the bottom panel. Now that the main or the bottom, yeah, main bottom panel, bottom main panel, you just call it the bottom panel. Okay, so I already have the centers marked here and here um, from when I cut it out, but if you do not, go ahead and mark those centers. And then also, I'm going to fold the pattern piece in half this way so that I can mark the centers on the short ends. And just make sure this is centered. Alright, All right. mark that center. We'll go ahead and place this also right sides together and just match up your center lines with the center marks that are on the wrong side of the exterior main panels. Just place a few clips along there and then repeat that on the other side. First I pin in the center, and then a couple more to each side of that, and then we'll do the short ends and then everything in between.
and then we'll do the same on the other end. Match up the center marks. And then we'll sew this together um, this way with the bottom panel facing the bottom of the presser foot. I still have my zipper foot on and we're using a one half inch seam allowance which will sew just alongside the um, piece of stabilizer that's adhered to the bottom panel. for this and it doesn't matter where you start but I usually like to start on one of the longer panels just because it's easier just remove the clips as you go and make sure um, as you go around the corners to keep it lined up it helps to Put your hand inside the bag um, and I also also always use this little screwdriver to hold things like I said in my other videos um, they make a tool for that called a stiletto and I just I don't know I never bought one I just always use this little screwdriver and it works okay for me so why stop no. make sure inside um, I'm making sure that there aren't any wrinkles that I'm sewing over.
so now I'm just going to make sure that the bottom panel looks even. Um, I see a couple spots where it kind of, again, it's the corners usually if I go off track. So I'll just go back in and kind of get a little closer to keep that at my one half inch seam allowance. Sometimes it's easier to go back around after it's already sewed and fix it than to get it right the first time, I don't know. So I'm going to take a look inside the bag, which I cannot see in here at all, um, just to make sure that, that I don't have any wrinkles or anything I need to fix. good. So now we'll go ahead and trim that seam allowance down as well. Um, I think I'll go ahead and I'm going to stop to eat lunch now. So I have the lining assembly left, um, which I'll do on the next video. We'll just do one more video, which is lining assembly and then attaching the lining to the exterior. So. I'm just going to trim this seam allowance down and then we'll uh, start the next video after lunch.